Internet. My name is Jenna Castle, and in my life I've assumed several different titles and numerous roles. But today, I simply wish to share with you some exciting ideas in order to help us all to grow. For when we open ourselves to growth at a personal level, we enhance our ability to more fully experience our lives. These ideas come from many rich sources. However, the main resources used to formulate this presentation, which I highly recommend, include an audio program entitled Freedom from Fear by Reverend Mary Bob of the Living Enrichment Institute, a book entitled Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers, Life is an Attitude by Elwood M. Chapman, and finally, Peace, Love, and Healing by Dr. Bernie F. Siegel. I'd like to begin by telling you a story. There once were three brick masons working together on a building. A little boy happened by and asked the first brick mason, What are you doing? Without even looking up, he responded, I'm laying brick. The little boy approached the second brick mason and asked him, What are you doing? The second brick mason looked kindly at the boy and said, I'm building a wall. The little boy approached the third brick mason and asked the same question. What are you doing? The brick mason faced him squarely and replied with enthusiasm and obvious pride. I am building a beautiful cathedral. Now if this little boy approached you and asked you, What are you doing? How would you respond? Do you feel as though you simply laid brick? Or do you retain the original joy and enthusiasm of your life choices? Do you simply go through your routine in an unconscious manner? Or do you always keep in the forefront of your mind a vision of your beautiful cathedral? Our minds are very powerful tools. How we experience our life's work and indeed our lives is to a great degree a function of what we tell ourselves. You see, the man laying brick performs the very same task as the man who is building a beautiful cathedral. But his inner experience was quite different. We do have the power to affect our own perspective and therefore our internal experience of external events. We've all heard about positive self-talk that what you tell yourself is very likely to become your reality. Well, if this is true, how do we turn our negative self-chatter into powerful I can messages? Well, one thing to understand is that the brain tries to find answers to the questions posed to it. So if you could ask yourself questions that will elicit a positive response, you have a head start on seeing the world in a positive way. For example, when you first wake up in the morning, do you ask yourself questions like this? What do I have to do today? What problems am I going to have to face? What's going to happen if I fail the challenges facing me? Or we try some of these questions instead. What am I excited about today? What challenges can I look forward to learning from today? What new opportunities can I create today? When facing a new challenge, or what some people call a problem, what kind of questions do you ask yourself? Do you ask, what could I lose if I try and fail? Or, how about this? What could I lose if I don't try? What could I gain by trying, whether I succeed or not? Often, we're stuck in negativity or negative emotions such as anger, depression, anxiety, and many fear. It's important to recognize that these negative emotions that we're experiencing are actually based in fear. Fear of failure, fear of being hurt, fear of being humiliated, fear of not having enough money, fear of being alone. I'm sure you can add to the list. For example, if you get angry because someone cut you off when you're driving, the first thing that actually occurred was that you experienced a fear of having a collision. The anger was actually based in fear, as most negative emotions are. Fear is the biggest 
inhibitor of us acting upon our dreams and living our lives fully. They hold back from participating in life fully because we are afraid. We're afraid to speak our truth, we're afraid to show up in the world as we are, and we're holding back in some way because of our fears. Well, I'm sad to say, it's not possible to do away with fear completely. Every person on this planet experiences fear. We all have fear in our lives. Think about it. Where is fear controlling you right now? We all have fear in our lives. Even the people who are very successful and self-confident, who are out there making their dreams a reality, experience fear. Therefore, fear is not the problem. What we do with the fear is what determines how we live our lives. Although we can't eliminate fear, we can view it differently and deal with it in healthy and productive ways. You see, we each have placed in fear situations with which we're comfortable. This is known as our comfort zone. We each have a very unique comfort zone based on our own past experiences, our perceptions of our capabilities, and our willingness to be out in the world. Some people are only comfortable in the confines of their own home. Others venture out into the world, into the workplace. And others still seem to make the whole world their home. But when the challenge is presented that is outside our personal comfort zone, fear appears. Sometimes our fear induces enough self-doubt that it actually prevents us from moving ahead. We allow the fear to immobilize us and to stop us from living fully or realizing our dreams. But well, what's the alternative? If we could shift our perspective and see fear instead as an ally that's telling us, proceed with caution, but proceed. A warning, if you will, that says clearly and boldly, growth opportunity ahead. So when you felt the fear, you would know that you're actually moving in the right direction. Towards growth, towards expanding your comfort zone, towards living fully. If we face our fear squarely and imagine in the safety of our mind, which after all is where fear exists, how we might deal with the challenge, we can take steps towards experiencing the fear and moving forward. We can make progressive approximations towards expanding our comfort zone. We can begin by imagining the worst possible consequences. What if the worst happens? And imagine yourself handling it. Every experience we've had began in thought and was projected into the world of being. Thoughts with feelings become reality. We must create what we do in this world twice. Once in our minds and then again out in the world to make it so. So facing the fear and imagining how would you handle that situation makes it easier to proceed with optimism. And as Oscar Wilde said, the basis of optimism is sheer terror. But how can we get past our fears? As Susan Jeffers says in her book of the same title, feel the fear and do it anyway. Each time we venture beyond the confines of our comfort zone, we discover new ways of being. We discover inner strength and ability. We learn to expect bigger and better things from ourselves. Expectation is another very powerful determiner of events. I'd like to share a story with you about a young man who took the Scholastic Aptitude Test, the SAT, as part of the college entrance procedures. When he received his test scores back, he saw the number 98 on the paper. Well, he was quite distressed and concerned about his ability to succeed in college with an IQ as low as 98. But he did go to college. His first term, he received D's and F's. The second term was no better, and the dean called him in for a conference. The dean warned him that if his performance continued at this poor level, he would be asked to leave the school. Well, what do you expect? 
expect, replied the young man. I only have an IQ of 98. The dean took out the file and explained to the young man, you don't have an IQ of 98. You scored in the 98th percentile. That means that your score was equal to or better than 98% of the students in all of North America. Well, the next term, that student pulled a 4.0 grade point average. The only thing that had changed were his expectations. Another example of how powerful expectations are in determining events was shown in a research project conducted in San Francisco. Three teachers had been brought into the principal's office and told, you three teachers are the best teachers in this whole school. We have decided to reward your performance by giving you each 30 of the best students. These teachers were asked, don't tell any of the students or the parents about this. At the end of the year, it was found that these students tested significantly higher than all of the students not only in the school, but in the entire district. The teachers were brought in again. They were informed that this had been an experiment and that the students had actually been selected at random. Well, the teachers were amazed and they could explain the high scores only by the fact that they were, after all, the best teachers. Well, then the researchers informed them, actually, we put all the teachers' names in a hat and yours were the three that were pulled. This was a double-blind study, with the only factor not being controlled for being expectation. In summary, if we learn to live with fear as an ally, which navigates our path in the direction of growth, use our minds and strength of spirit to expand our personal comfort zone, and learn to expect bigger and better things of ourselves, we will enhance our ability to live more fully with a constant focus on our beautiful cathedral. I'd like to leave you with a poem that says, Come to the edge, he said. No, they replied, you will fall. Come to the edge, he said. No, you will fall. Come to the edge. They went to the edge. He pushed them, and they flew. I wish you all a good flight. Thank you.